Well, let's get excited in the Lord's house today. Come on, come on, come on. You know that you were created to praise. You were created to praise. Amen. Amen. I was created to praise. The people that don't even know God were created to praise. Come on. Everybody was created to praise. We need to get a little bit more excited in God's house today. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have a lot to praise the Lord about. As long as we have breath, we have reason to praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Let's raise the praise. Come on, come on, come on. Let's raise the praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. Praise when surrounded. Come on. This praise is the water. My, My enemies drowning. Yeah. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh. I know you're still in control. Thank you, Lord. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Wow. My praise is the shout Hallelujah. that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, praise the Lord, oh, my soul, I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. 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 Let's go back up to the top. Let's go back to the top. All the way to the top. Come on. All the way to the top. Oh, not to our top, to Kapuni's top. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let everything. Come on, you guys go. Let everything. 
that has breath. Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Woo! Praise on the mountain. Come on, shake up all those heavy bags. Praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. Praise when I'm numbered, and praise when surrounded. Woo! Cause praise is the water. Our enemies, enemies drowning. drowning. Come on. Yeah. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise because I know Woo! you're still in control. Yes, you are. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Woo! My praise is the shout Hallelujah. that brings Jericho hey! down. Hallelujah. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise my Lord. Oh, my soul. Woo! Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Woo! Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Woo! I won't be quiet. My God is how could I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even when sometimes we don't feel like it, we force ourselves to praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. We got to raise the praise in this house. Amen. We come to church not to check the box. We come to church to honor the Lord. Come on, yes, Lord. to honor the Lord and to worship the Lord and to give him glory and to give him gratitude, to thank him. 
Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord? We worship you, Lord, in this house today. You are more than worthy. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are magnificent. You are omnipotent, omnipresent. Hallelujah. You know everything, Lord. You're omniscient. And yet you take time to be concerned with us, to care about every detail. You see every tear. You see our joy. You know all about us. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know when we sit down. You know when we stand up. You know when we travel. You know all things. We're thankful in this house this morning, Lord God. And as long as we have breath, we will praise you. We worship you in this house, Lord. Come on, let's worship, church. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you give us a sound mind in this crazy, crazy world. You remind us of whose we are. You remind us of who we are. Children of the Most High God. We worship you in this house today, Lord. We acknowledge that we live because you breathe in us. We worship you, Lord. Come on.
and I know the sound. Wouldn't it be like you to be different than we thought, different than we want, but better? You're better. Wouldn't it be like you to be different than we thought, different than we want, but better? You're better. Hold on, don't grow tired, don't give up, he's better. Hold on, don't grow tired, don't give up, he's better. Hold on, don't grow tired, don't give up, he's better. Hold on, don't grow tired, don't give up. He's better. Hold on. Don't grow tired. Don't give up. He's better. Hold on. Don't grow tired. Don't give up. He's better. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. We worship you in this house today. We thank you for this wonderful day and all that it holds. Hallelujah. Thank you for every family that is represented here today. Thank you for those who are traveling. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace you pour out upon your children. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, of this wonderful, most special holy day. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity and privilege we have of celebrating, hallelujah, with hallelujah. our Jewish family. Yes. Thank we thank you, Lord. We know the importance of this time of year, and we know that this is a day of atonement. Starting this evening, we thank you for Yom Kippur. We thank you, Lord, that it is a time of release, a time of forgiveness, a time of repentance. Lord, so we come before you this day, Lord, and we pray, please forgive us. Please cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we forgive everybody that has wronged us, everyone that has done us no good. We forgive them. Hallelujah. We release them. Hallelujah. We don't hold anybody captive in our heart. We don't hold any grudges, Lord. We release it right now and we put it under the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we were forgiven too because of you. So we forgive, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for this wonderful time of the year. We thank you for your servant, what you have deposited into him, and what you will distribute in this house today. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for every leader, for every laborer in this church and ministry. We thank you for our church family. Hallelujah. Our online family. Hallelujah. We thank you for the associate pastors and their families. We thank you for the worship pastor, for the youth pastor and their families. We thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. Hallelujah. We thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. We thank you for your children in this house and for their families. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you for you are so good. We are so grateful in this house today. We pray for our nation. We pray for our government. Oh, Lord, help us. We pray for all of the survivors of Lahaina, Lord, and those who lost so much and those who lost loved ones, Lord. We pray that you would please have mercy upon them, Lord, and we thank you that you would blanket them with peace, Lord God. Help them, Lord. Send your children to them to minister about your love and your mercy, Lord, the gospel, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us because of you, Lord, because of you, Jesus. We live 
abundant lives, eternal lives. Hallelujah. We're so blessed on this earth, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for those around the world, Lord, so much tragedy. And you said it, it's written in your word, Lord. So we see your word coming to pass, for your word is truth. Your word is life. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering throughout the world, such tragedy, loss, broken hearts. Lord, we pray, please help them, Lord. Have mercy upon them. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We pray for the broken heart, for you know that you mend the broken heart and you bind up the wounds. So we thank you for your mercy, Lord. We love you. We acknowledge that we live because of you. We acknowledge, Lord God, that you are the goodness in our lives, Lord. And we look all around us and we see the goodness of God. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Help us always to remember that we come to your house to worship you, not to check a box, not to do it because my family wanted me to do it or do it because my mom or my dad or my kids or whatever other reason. But the reason that we are in your house is to worship you and you alone. In Jesus' name, all of God's children say amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. It is time. It's always good to celebrate. Never forgetting where we came from. You know, knowing where we started sometimes gives us an advantage of where we're going. And of course, we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. So today, we're going to have communion. The ushers are going to go and pass out the wafers and the juice. But we're going to do it a little different. I haven't done it for a little while. We're going to do communion. New Testament, I'll share a little bit. But I'm going to do it the way the Jewish people do it. I'm going to do my best to read it properly. And thank uh, our Olivier Melnick, our very powerful friend, uh, Messianic Jew, which is a born-again Jewish Christian. And um, how he taught me and gave me a little bit. And it's important that we understand it's not about the old school. It's about honoring God and remembering. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes we don't remember all these wonderful things that God has done for us and done for others. I don't forget where I came from because I never want to repeat that process again. I don't want to go through those cycles. I want to remember what he's done, not remembering the past in a negative, but remembering in a positive. And God is good. We should be excited to be alive. Every day counts. Time is life. Life is time. Use your time wisely. Giving him praises is, is you don't have to be religious. All you got to do is love him and care for him. Please, Brother Harry, go right ahead. I know some of the ushers are getting ready upstairs, including Benaiah. So I'm going to get ready to read in the Jewish language, which is not an easy language. I struggle with English. So I'm going to move forward when it's time. But believe it or not, in the time of Yom Kippur, the Jewish people actually do communion. They just read it a little different, and they share it a little different because Jesus to them is in a different place, not yet here. Came, they're waiting for him to come the first time. But he came already. So we're waiting for him to come the second time. And that's a power that we have to share. And that's what a chosen people does. They share with the Jewish people about Christ being here already in the tabernacle from then to now. But it's important to remember that's why these banners went up. And I keep on sharing it because these are the sons of Israel, not the tribes. This is before they became tribes. You start at the origin, understanding where you come from, you'll know where you're going. And we got a great place to go one day. Amen. Amen. Meanwhile, we got to praise Him down here and give Him some glory. We got to practice all we can. Because up there, I think that light will never, ever diminish. It'll just always be so bright for us. You know, but until we get there, we need to forgive each other. We need to forgive those that have bothered us, offended us in our past. We have to release them from our hearts. We can't hold them captive. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult, but it's needed. The Bible says very firmly, New Testament good news. God says, I've forgiven you, so you need to forgive. And we got to understand, if we don't forgive, the Father doesn't release us in that forgiveness. It sounds hard, but it's true. Because how can we say to God, well, I want you to forgive me for what I've done, but I ain't going to forgive them. I ain't going to let them go. I'm going to be mad at them. we got to be very careful. We have to find a place to release them. You don't have to like everybody, but you have to love everybody. 
The Bible says doesn't say anything about liking people. Because we may not like how they treat us that day or like what they do. doesn't matter. We just love each other. Amen? And that's very, very important. I will take mine and then I'll go and do my best to read in the, thank you, in the Jewish language. During the time of Yom Kippur, they gather in the synagogue and they gather in their place of prayer. And the rabbi comes forward. I'm connected to a rabbi uh, that is not yet born again. And I communicate through email with him. And he shares a little bit. He's always like one week ahead. Hey, Rocky, Yom Kippur coming. You know, just it's just nice to hear from them and know. And they are in the place of not being born again yet, but they are powered and empowered by God because that place of Jerusalem is a very important place to God. That's why he says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So this morning as we come, I'm going to kind of just share a little bit in the New Testament, just openly, but I'm going to read my very best uh, into bringing forth this word here. And I did, should have brought my glasses down, but that's okay. Maybe I should have. Can somebody get my glasses for me, please? Close range is really hard. These words are really small. So if you just bear with me a minute. Sorry out there in TV land, and computer land, and YouTube land. We'll be right back momentarily. I'll just smile. But um, I could read it in the office, but I think here in the distance, I need to get a little closer. The words are very small. I don't want to mispronounce them. So first we're going to talk about the bread, then we're going to talk about the, the vine, the juice. And this is how the Jewish people do it on Yom Kippur. Thank you. Beru ata Adonai Elohinu Melech Elohim Hamo Tiz Liem Min Ha Atriz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread of the earth. This is their word, so today we're going to do it. Jesus says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us take and eat together. In such a manner also, they say, in this time, the Jewish people, Baru ata Adone Elohinu Melek, Elohim, Bore, Pri, Ha, Ga, Ven. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Jesus says, This drink in honor of me. And all these things we do in remembrance of Christ and all he had done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can see I practiced, yeah? I have to practice a little. God is good, amen? So as we read about this, as we come to the place where we're looking at Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, but meaning atonement, Yom, Day. Yom Kippur, Kippur, Atonement, Day of Atonement. It means where Christ came and gave us this freedom, gave us this joy, gave us this powerful, powerful, powerful time where he says listen i'm going to wash you clean i'm going to make it so that you can walk in power and integrity and bless each and every one god bless you so we're going to read the word this morning and we're going to read it in the new testament we can go to leviticus but we're not and renee shared on wednesday night in leviticus the original origin of where it came but today we're going to read out of matthew 4 17 let's read together and let's get that up on the screen please we're just going to keep moving forward. When you're ready, let's read together. From then on, Jesus began to preach. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Thank you, Father, for your word, and we bless you and give you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you this morning that you'd bless each and every one, every family, those watching, those traveling. And Father, we thank you for your word, your word pure, righteous, holy, and it is the good news in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks for reading with me. Listen, those words are the first words before Jesus did a miracle in Canaan with the wedding. These are his words. So you know what he's saying basically in these words? He's saying he not only began to preach, but he said what? What John the Baptist said. Repent. Nobody wants to hear about that anymore. Nobody wants to hear about repent. I remember some time back preaching about the Shekinah glory, the presence of God in the thundering power, his fullness of everything he's got, just 
Shekinah glory, the one that caused Moses to glow. And there were two missionaries in the house. And after service, they came up to me and they said, you want that Shekinah glory, Pastor? I said, yes, I want it in the house. Because where the Shekinah glory is, no disease can exist. Nothing can stand in the glory of God that is not pure. So he has to make it pure. And they told me this. They were right here. I remember him because he was dancing in the, in the sides and everything. And he told me, if you want the Shekinah glory, I just shared this with Pastor Bobby, then you need to preach repentance. Amen. And see, some people don't want to hear about that. Now, to repent means to turn from. It's not going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It just means to turn from what you're doing. That's how simple it is. Before I became a Christian, I had to turn from what I was doing. I had to turn from bartending. Right? Because I, I, I'm a Christian, but I'm a bartender. I'm a bartending Christian. That wouldn't work. That wouldn't probably witness properly, you know, to anybody. So I had to turn from it. It wasn't like a big, like, oh my gosh, you know. But enough conviction that I gave notice to my boss. I didn't walk out and go, well, the Lord said, I got to walk out on you. No. In fact, he had to lead to the mainland, which was David Paul's Lahaina Grill, originally Lahaina Grill. But anyways, he had to go to the mainland, and I stayed a month just to make sure I maintained the restaurant and the bar and yes it was wrong but I had Christians come to me I had pastors stand outside the window God went out of his way for me you know because sometimes we go oh, I don't want to look at that I want this you know we get used to our lifestyle and what supports us in provisions and sometimes it's good and sometimes not so much and we have to know the difference so I know that bartending wasn't going to be a way for me if I planned to follow God in any way and I was a very young Christian but I'll tell you what, God got me over all kinds of homophobias and all kinds of weird stuff that, I, you know, in my brain I was thinking, I don't want to hold hands with men. You know, I just, you know, like I want to be a man. When you go to church, it's like everybody hold hands. You have to be next to a guy, you hold his hand. You know, I had to get used to, to that. I don't know about you, I'm just being honest. But it's important that we understand the word of God. Jesus spoke. It's important to understand. Those are, and I asked God, I said, what? What? was the first thing that Jesus did when he went public. And we all go to the, the miracle, the water to wine. But no, I meant the first thing. And this is what he said. He said, you got to, he followed John the Baptist, his cousin. You got to repent. Because the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is here. So he established that the kingdom of God was here, but not in its fullness yet. He had to go through all of that. He had to go to the cross. And we know all of the readings. We understand what Jesus did. But we shouldn't make light of it because he did some great things. Yeah. Was it easy to carry that cross? Yeah. That was a heavy cross. But he did it. And he did it because that's what was required of him. When he began his public ministry, these are the first words recorded. From then on, Jesus began to preach. So when he went public, he began to preach. It came on the scene, John the Baptist uh, water baptized in the Jordan and he went into the wilderness John came out of the wilderness they switched places and he began his ministry when he got back and this is what he said first words repent so you might not like hearing it this morning or even out there but we need to repent and you might not be doing anything drastic but you, I know we get bad attitudes I know we drive on the road and we don't have a good attitude sometimes you know, especially if you got a fish in your car, you got to watch out the fish start to shake, you know, in the back. Because we might have a bad attitude. Or we might not be able to, we could treat people nicer, you know. Anybody ever get angry in your mind but never say anything? I've done that before, you get angry in your mind. But nobody knows but you, right? Yeah, I know. And, oh no, he, he knows everything, yes. And, you know, I love when people say, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. He knows exactly. And that's why it says, where your treasure is your heart is also so god relates to our treasure what we see valuable what we count as valuable as part of our heart in in, in connection we may not listen celebrate the jewish community in the way that they do but we do celebrate amen but we honor the origin of the meaning behind what they do that's why i read what i read in this wonderful it's it's a it's actually called the messianic passover and giving the experience the explanations of you know Shana Tova and sharing what they celebrate during that time in their way but if you hear those words they celebrate the communion the bread and the wine or the juice as we do and in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 we share it here when we do it but I just kind of paraphrased it where Jesus says this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me he's sitting at the table with the disciples when he does this it's not a dinner 
It's an actual powerful movement because there's healing in the communion. The process of going through the communion. There's a healing in that. For spiritually, emotionally, mentally, amen? All of it. And um, I'm going to share with you the, the rabbi that, uh, he's the one that always, like every year, you know, the different occasions and their festivals that they celebrate, he emails me usually. But he said, he did something different. I was reading this morning when I was doing my devotion. He put out these plates and everybody's like, the person that's emailing me saying, you know, uh, rabbi so-and-so did this and he put out all these plates on a table and we we're wondering, what is he doing? Because this isn't our tradition. You know, all these plates and then he got this big bag of changes like uh, silver dollars or whatever it was and started to put them on the plates and they're like what is he doing you know because it's not their tradition but he thought see how they're just kind of breaking tradition a little bit he said each plate represents someone and something whether it's our emotion our broken heart or the poor or our community or the children or and he had all these plates all over the place and so that was his way to demonstrate. Might sound a little weird, and what does it have to do? It has to do with God blessing us. And he wanted to demonstrate through a simple thing, because when we eat, most of us eat on plates, right? Not out of our hands, right? On, or on the table. I mean, right? We've got plates. So it's a representation of provisions and supplying those for those that are in need or even for ourselves that we have sometimes. Sometimes we get a little emotional. Sometimes we get a little sad. Sometimes, but we should always be glad. I believe, this is me, I believe there's never a bad day upon this earth. There's hard days. But as long as I'm alive above ground and I can do everything I can, it's a good day. might be a hard day that day, but it's not a bad day. God don't give us bad days. The Bible says God is good. Being that He's good, He can only give us good days. There's no bad days. Yeah, there's troubling days, hard days sometimes. Amen? We go through stuff, right? You know, when we go through stuff, we're supposed to use it to go through the process. Instead, we usually complain about it. Amen. Amen. When I became a Christian, I learned, you don't say, why me? Because he might explain it all up. So I don't say that. I say, thank you, Lord. Help me through this difficulty. I trust you. I trust your word. And I put it before me. And that's how we should work. Honoring God in all times. As the return of Christ draws near, and that's what he's saying, the kingdom is coming near again, we are ready are we ready for His return? We are ready? Are we ready? Do we believe that the Word of God says what the former forerunner did, John the Baptist, when he said in uh, Matthew 3, 2, he said the same thing. Repent, the kingdom of God is near. So John the Baptist is speaking before Christ is bringing forth His first words. He's the ushering in. He's the forerunner. He's saying, hey, listen, remember when He came into the Jordan just before He's walking, Jesus is walking, John is in the Jordan, He goes, behold, the Lamb of God that washes away the sins of the world. Now let me progress you on and he gets arrested for getting a little snappy with some people that, you know, openly telling them their sin and what he shouldn't do. So he gets to put in the prison, but he goes to the third cell, the deepest part. And some of them come to visit him and he says, go and ask Jesus, are you the one? Is it now? When you're in a place where you're really pressured, when you feel left out, I'm sure he felt, I read the book, it's called The Prisoner in the Third Cell, beautiful book. It shares about how John was sad. You know, because he did all that work. He's like, I want to enjoy some with my cousin, you know. I want to be around with Jesus. And how come I got to be in prison? Because his time and purpose had been fulfilled. He called out the enemy as the enemy was. He spoke to people and told them what was wrong. Dealing with adultery and other things. He spoke openly, but he spoke, you know, very aggressively. And we know this story, and we're not going to get into that today. That's not what it's about. But it's about someone that came forward and said, hey, we've got to repent. So the message today isn't to go, I'm sorry. The message is turn. Anything that's not bringing you close to God, turn from it. Yes. Work with God on that issue. He'll help you. I ask for God for help. I don't know about you. I wake up every day, I go, thank you for the breath of life, life itself, and I need your help. Because I need to face my challenges and go through whatever i got to go through today. And God is able to do that. That's why we have Yom Kippur. That's why we celebrate to be reminded. And this is what this is all about. These 10 days are supposed to be days of awe, not awful. Amen. It's supposed to be, ah, oh, praise you, Lord. Not, ah, oh, how awful this is. That's not, that's not what He called us to do. So how do we serve God with our gifts, which is in us, our lives? We have applied them for his kingdom work, I hope. Because that's what they're supposed to be for. Kindness, you know, and gentleness, and helping people. 
you can do whatever you can. Never think, never think that one person cannot make a difference. The government might want you to think you, one person cannot make a difference, but you can. In the Bible, throughout the Bible, only in the New Testament, only takes one. Only takes one. Only takes one to step forward. Only takes one to make that word. Only takes one to make a difference. And you might not think that you make a difference. And you may not be the one doing all the work. But I share with Billy Graham went to a tent service at his very young age. And before he became Billy Graham, the powerful world evangelist. And he went to this tent service. And there wasn't much happening. I believe it was the last night. And he went up to an altar call. The pastor was one. You know, not too much people here. You know, the preacher, the evangelist. And he witnessed Billy Graham to the Lord and he spoke over him and from that day everything changed this man had an important part of Billy Graham stepping into place and just to let you know the first preacher preached here was Billy Graham in this house because it was the largest at that time in Maui in the gathering they didn't have the Sheraton and all these other places when I found out that I went oh I'm not the first you know because we go through that sometimes but I was so blessed that he preached here. He set the foundation. He is a wonderful evangelist, you know. And that's back in the 70s, of course. Some of you go, what? I wasn't even born yet. And, and some of us just were graduating from high school. <laughs> we won't talk about people. Anyway, so it's really good to know that God gave us this wonderful life. You know, a farmer plants seed always because the harvest has to be always. But if you know a farmer that only plants, his once in a, only plants once in a while, the path he's on is famine. But I want to just real quickly go to where the word famine and revelation in what's coming isn't actually the lack of food. It's the cost of it. Inflation, they call that. As you study in the book of Revelation, you see it already, right? Not just gas prices. When you go to the store, right? So a lot of people are going to go, what? This, this two weeks ago, it was this much, and now it's this much. God will supply you with the provisions to get all that. So that you don't have to complain, but you can be a blessing, not only to your family, because we got to be a light. Uh, you know, my family might not like me always, but they got to see the light. Amen? they got to see that there's a difference in me. They, they don't have to like me, but they have to go, oh. And then sooner or later, God, God bless them. Because they're not walking with God, but they used to. And sometimes we have to realize we got to come back. Just turn from where you're going. Just come back to the Lord. He, he has open arms. You know? He don't come and slap your ears. Amen? I mean, that would hurt. Anybody ever experienced that? That hurts if you get two ears slapped at the same time. Amen? That's for not hearing right. But he doesn't do that. He goes, huh, oh, I'm going to give you a hug. You know? Because he loves us. He just wants us to turn from where we're going if it's not toward him. I don't serve him in perfection. I serve him with my faults. I don't glorify my faults, but I know that I have them. I'm not going to walk around going, I'm perfect. That's why I walk the way I walk. No, I walk with God uprightly. I do what the Word says, but that doesn't mean my flesh doesn't kick in every now and then. Amen? Like a, like a, like a really tight clutch, and you scratch out. <coughs> That's how the flesh gets. It makes a lot of noise. Nobody ever does that? No. <laughs> I do once in a while. I don't mean to. Lift your foot real quick, you know. And that's our flesh. That's how our flesh is. It's real quick and activating. Amen. So a farmer plants continually in the season after season because they don't know exactly what kind of a harvest will come. During Yom Kippur, they activate this power of thanking God and blessing Him for the rains. Yes, the former and the latter rains. It says in the Bible, they're going to meet one day in power. And I'm sure they have before over and over again. And that brings forth a generous harvest. Amen. Amen. Y'all want a harvest, right? Yes. God has a harvest. He doesn't want us to be lacking anything. He doesn't. He didn't create us for that. He created us to live abundantly, Jesus says. I've come to give life and life more abundantly. And He knows the needs you have to live abundantly. He didn't say extravagantly. But you can live really good. It depends on what you call extravagant. Amen? I mean, right? Everybody's different, right? I mean, we're at Bobby, Pastor Bobby and I were talking how these billionaires leave their homes, their mansions. Just leave them. With all the cars in the garage. I'm like, oh, give me the address. <laughs> you know, maybe not here, but they're doing it, you know? And a lot of them are movie stars, and they actually do that. Just imagine to have so much financial freedom. You go, I don't need this. I'll just leave them. I got four more. What about the Corvette and the Maserati? Leave them inside there. 
I don't understand that. See, because that's not, to me, that's foolishness. You could donate it. You could give it. You could give it someplace where it could make a difference. I mean, you could make a difference with that. You know, God is so good that He gives us opportunities. But He wants us blessed. And I got news for you. I'm going to speak out loud. Next year, there's a harvest like we haven't seen before. This is the word I got last week. So I'm, I know that it's going to happen. I don't know exactly how. God doesn't tell me the details. Sometimes He just tells me, that's my plan. I'm like, well, how are we going to do it? I don't know. Oh, gosh. Because there's no details in it. Anybody like details? I like details. Then I know what to do. But He wants you to have faith to do it when He says it, not plan ahead of it. Oh, you're not hearing me. See, faith isn't what you got. It's what He's got for you. Faith is also listening to Him at that time. If He gave us everything laid out, we'd probably mess it up. I don't know about you, but... You know, we're like, oh, maybe we should do it this way instead. How about if I do it earlier, I might get something different. No, it doesn't work that way. That's why God tells you on the spot, faith activated now. Amen? So sometimes that'll happen. So famine, actually, in the, in the book of Revelation, when the scales are unbalanced and the riders come, uh, not enough today is what's famine called. So that means it's inflation, imbalance of cost. That's the scales that's on that guy riding in the horse. He says the barley is this much, the wheat is this much, the flour is this much. It's to show us that inflation is coming. It's already here. It's already here. But you know what? David didn't feel a famine for three years. Why? Because he wasn't lacking anything. His whole kingdom wasn't lacking anything. But there was a famine in the land. And he asked, he said, God, why is there? Because they were reporting to him, hey, there's a famine going on around here. He's like, what? Because he was well supplied. So when God told him what was wrong, it was a 400 year covenant that God broke and that Joshua made that Saul broke, King Saul. So you cannot tell me that God don't hold his covenants. 400 years went by, broken, all of a sudden there's a famine in the land and David has to do some things to render that and stop it. Amazing how our God is. Our God is a God of covenant. That's why he gave us an old covenant. Praise God for the new covenant. Uh, Sister Renee shared it, uh, I believe, on Wednesday night out of Jeremiah. But yet it is written in Hebrews chapter 8, saying it's going to be written upon our hearts. I love those scriptures. Because it shows us how good God is. Because I'm going to give you a new covenant through my son. I'm going to write it on your hearts because your brains are kind of not working right now on that. No, you didn't get that. We try to process everything. You know, processed food is not good for us. So sometimes we process with our brains, sometimes not good either. We just got to believe God in our hearts and what He shares with us. Rising prices, different things happening today. We feel all of it. But God will supply all of it through it. He never said He'd abandon us. He said He would always be with us. So I really want to encourage you. I'm not just giving you a blab and grab. I'm giving you the Word of God that He will supply everything. He promises us this. And it, when He makes a promise, He don't break His promises. People may. And that's what we need to change and not break ours. Amen? We have to understand that in order to control people, there are two things, basically, three altogether that you have to control as a domineering power. You control food, water, and energy source. That's how you control people. There's no other way. You have to control their food, control their water, and their energy source, which is whatever electricity or whatever power you're getting. Now, I'm not saying anything other than that. So all you have to do is do your homework and look at the world today. Matthew 6.33. We know this scripture, but I'm going to share it a little bit more in just a little detail. Seek the, this is the New Living Translation. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. That's how it says in the, in the New Living Translation. Of course it says, seek the kingdom of God first. That's what it says in the King James. So above all else, and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. So the part of that scripture we got to pay attention is, number one, you got to seek His kingdom, not your own value system. What God sees as valuable upon this earth, which are souls, number one. You know He wants everybody saved, right? He doesn't want anybody destroyed. He said that all would come to repentance, and none would perish. And we want that for our families, don't we? Because I have family that needs to be touched by God. I have people I know need to be touched by God. We have people in the community. We shouldn't be so smug spiritually that we only think of ourselves. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. To hell with everybody else. Well, that's where I go without Jesus. We can't have that attitude. We have to have an attitude. I want to help, Lord. What can I do? What's my part? 
But the first part is the kingdom of God above all else. And then to live for Him. That's really what it means. Prioritizing love over survival. Survival will put you in a place that love seems to be pushed aside. But yet you do have it, and they call it heroes in the world, where they step out and they even get hurt helping people. And we saw it in Lahaina. Many helped the others that were not able to help. Some of them got hurt. Some of them didn't survive. But, you know, when you give your life in that manner, there's no greater gift, the Bible says, than to give your life for another. Jesus did that for us. But there are many heroes in the world that are not on the football field, basketball, golf course, baseball. Sorry if I burst anybody's bubble. They're not heroes. They're not. Those that put on body armor, they're heroes too, protecting our nation. Those helping each other in the streets today, they're heroes. Our military forces, they're heroes. They sacrifice a lot to be where they are so that we can have what we have. So I can preach like this in the freedom of the power of God. It's the truth. And I'm sorry, I'm not saying I don't like football, but they're not my heroes. I don't have any heroes in football. In fact, my team hasn't won in a long, long time. So we won't talk about that. But, <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, I enjoy watching it, you know. Um, basketball, man, that's like, you got to do a lot of running for basketball. But what I'm sharing is that, and I'm not trying to quench them. I'm saying, that's not heroes. Oh, by the way, they're paid big bucks to do what they do. Multi-million dollar contracts for a gift they have in sports and whatever. And I'm not criticizing it, but that's not my hero. The hero is the person that stops and changes that tire for that woman on the side of the road who was scared and didn't want to get out of her car. And he said, just stay in your car, pop the trunk. I've read these stories, and they, they lift up everybody in the car, amen, <laughs> it's, you know, because they understand. But they're heroes, too, because they're there to help. They stop in their busy schedule. They do what is necessary, you know, and help people. Just help people. Those are heroes, too. But Jesus, he's my hero. Because he gave it all when I wasn't even thinking about him. He gave everything when I didn't even a thought for him. I knew he was there, but I didn't think about him. Thank God that he took time out. But I thank, thank the Father. Amen. Amen. So prioritizing love over survival. Some, something Jesus embodies throughout his life and teaching, especially on the cross, is love over over survival he wasn't thinking about survival on the cross he was thinking about giving his life and he gave it amen he gave it remember i said remember the guy next to him all he said is remember me he said today you're going to be with me he didn't get water baptized didn't go through a prayer we shared that last week i'm amazed at that scripture every time i look at it the other guy was grumbling on the cross now that's really stupid to me you're already on the cross what you got to lose Remember me too, even though I'm an idiot. Because he was already criticizing the Lord, right? And the other guy goes, hey, you're going to die. You ain't got no sense or what? But just the simple words, remember me. I was like, wow. No water baptism, no born again prayer. Jesus is still on the earth. And even with Jesus not resurrected yet, he looks at him and says, today you're going to be with me. Man, those are powerful words. You want to hear that every day. One day you're going to be with me. You're going to be with me. And we want to be there in, in the end. I'm blessed we got some place to go. Amen. That don't charge rent. Excess of everything that we need beyond compare. I don't even know what gold looks like transparent. Streets of gold that are transparent. How do I even compute that? My brain too small. It doesn't match our physics. It doesn't relate to the things. All the gems on this earth and diamonds come from heaven. It's written, all of it. Onyx, all of that. Even the stuff I cannot pronounce. I'm like, what kind of jewel is that? <laughs> but that's how righteous and holy God is in His heavenly place. Amen? Amen? Seeking God's agenda, not our own. We all got agendas. We all got plans. Amen? Anybody, have, anybody ever make plans during the week? I make plans during the week. I don't care if it's here in the ministry, work. Uh, uh, it might be at home, you know, whatever. I'm on yard. But I was always saying, what are we doing today? If I'm off, what are you doing? We're blessed when we have one day off. We don't have to do anything really physical. I'm like, we don't have it. Wow. You know, we can sleep in today if the dogs don't wake me up. Not changing in according to our agenda. Not changing, in other words, not changing our lifestyle to our agenda, but God's agenda. Giving Him that open door to say, hey, listen, what, is, what do you have for me today? God says to my kingdom work, 
give and to live for me that's what he says first to his words of direction of the kingdom being established and then no greater value than God himself which means he's free we always God comes first but do we really put him first is he our greatest value we all have a value system that's how our priorities are set we have priorities you know you ever heard before my mom used to tell me change your priorities but I didn't think it attached to a value system what I value most in life is what I prioritize and so we have to put God first as the most valuable priority in our life amen, amen. and his kingdom is great it's powered Yom Kippur is a time of turning from stupid I was sharing with one of the youth yesterday uh, at our home uh, training I said I said stupid is not a bad word stupid by definition is we know what to do but we don't do it I'm guilty many times I believe it's in the book of Isaiah God said he's going to make a path open for everyone and I love the English easy translation even stupid people can find it when I first read it I qualify because I've done things I know not to do that's what Paul says these things I know to do I don't do and the things I know not to do I do them why do we do that now this is Paul a powerful man of God because we do things we need to repent turn from those things David said it best remind me Lord the outcome of my sin before I sin Oh, that's what I want. You know, oh, but that's not, I'm, I'm walking away from that. And so we have to make choices every day. Nobody can force you. Nobody can control you. God gives you free will. He's so wonderful. He's so great. Man. I, I, I don't even know how that transpires or works in the fullness. Because you get to choose, even though He knows what you're going to choose. That's scary to me. He knows I'm going to sin before I sin. He knows the sin I'm going to commit before I even think of that. That's like what changed my mind. Some of you are going to get that. That's how powerful it is. Lord, change my mind. If you know what I'm going to think to sin before I think to do it, change my mind. Then I won't even think I lost anything. I know it sounds crazy, but life is crazy sometimes. But it's good. I want to close with this scripture, and we all know it. It's Philippians 4.19, New Living Translation. I want to close with this because I want us to know that God wants to bless us and supply every need. He needs us to see that so that we can want that. Are you listening? God doesn't say He'll give us what we want. But if we receive from Him His Word that says He'll supply all of our needs, then we need to want that. And that want will be supplied. That's, I'm going to read it from New Living Translation. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from His glorious riches, and He has an abundance that never runs out, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. That's how simple that is. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but that's it. That's why the Jewish people are always eager to bless the Lord. Because they actually not only hear, but they believe He's the one that provides for them. Jehovah Jireh, not only provider, but the God who sees. He sees us all. He sees everything. I don't give because I don't love Him. I give because I love Him. I don't give because I'm scared of Him. I give because I love Him. The Jewish people, even though they may not have Christ in their heart, they understand that the work of the Lord is blessed over and over again when we are part of that work. That's how you establish kingdom work. That's how you establish it. And we've, you know, we've given, all of us coming together and people from the mainland, even those pastors, thank you so much, sending, we've given to American Red Cross, Salvation Army. Salvation Army sends us, I don't know about you, but when I get a written card, I know that person took time to talk. You know, it's not just typed out of a computer. I don't have any problem with that. But I love those written cards, you know. You get something for Christmas, it's just a stamp on it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's my family, <laughs> you know. A written card, even just a little bit of words, you know. God bless you, love you. You know, whatever it is, it makes me feel good because I know they took the time. to. Don't be sending me a lot of cards, okay. I just, I was just saying. <laughs> you guys, it'll lighten up. But, um, but now we're giving, um, we're finding people that have gone through loss and whatever and as soon as we accumulate the funds we write a thousand dollar check out to them and hopefully either have it delivered or they come get it whatever it is but the reason we do that is because they need money they need resources to buy food not only to buy food that they need that they may not have got but like shoes or school books whatever it doesn't matter what matters is that now we can help independently and that's what we believe so that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're working toward doing is helping a family individually. 
And it might not, you know, it might not solve all the problems, but it'll help. And it encourages someone that really needs it that there's somebody that's looking at you and saying, hey, we know you got a need. We understand. Might not be able to give you everything, but we want to help you. So just sharing, thank you, everybody. That's what we're doing, amen, in this house, and that's what we thank the Lord for. We also have 22 outreaches, so we give that openly and powerfully, amen. And part of it is uh, American Red Cross. and There's a lot of negatives flying all over the place, amen. And, but you got to know and just check out what you're doing, where you're giving, and what's being done, amen. We still have a few thousand that need help. And the dates are coming October 8th. They're opening kind of poly side. Uh, they've extended, the governor extended till November so people can stay in the hotels. But our, our mayor has promised, I heard his last speech with his board now, he's got him. He said, nobody will come out of that hotel and not have some place to live. He made a promise to the community. And I believe, I believe he's going to keep it. Yeah. I really do. I know he's going through rough times and I know it's difficult. And, but it's a tough job for anybody to walk into, anybody. And when you walk into something like that, I mean, hey, we need a scapegoat, right? People want to blame somebody. But really, when you stop blaming and you stop being the victim, you begin recovery. And you come into the place where you can start to recover. God brings us into recovery. We're not victims. We're not survivors. We're overcomers. So we have to help other people. Amen? We have to help them through this time. So we just thank the Lord for all of you today. Listen, if you're watching, if you're listening, maybe you never asked Jesus to come into your heart. You're not on the cross. I'm not on the cross. Praise God for that. But God remembers you. He remembers us. But I'd like to pray with you. All you have to do is raise your hand. It's not about a religious act. It's about asking Jesus into your heart. Book of John chapter 3. Being born again, what is said in the Word. It's just asking Jesus into your heart. So today, I'd like to pray with you if that's you. Just raise your hand and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. I repent. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. And come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I love you and I appreciate you. And I'll learn daily that I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer, give us an email, give us a call. If you don't have a Bible, let us know. We'll send one to you. If you want to give an offering or if you want to hit up an offering to Lahaina, we have a special area you can go. It'll give you a link. You go to the webpage. Uh, wordoftruthmaui.org there's a green button on top press it it'll securely take you to the link and you can do it there you can isolate to Lahaina if that's what you choose and do it that way and it'll go directly to the new, the new vision that we have of just trying to help one family at a time every time we are able to I believe God moves in that family it's a good seed it's a good seed so bless you God bless you God's peace upon you and remember smile when you're smiling. No, don't make me sing. I love you. God bless you. Have a great week. <laughs> amen and amen. God is good to us. Amen.